So in view 9, there's a new introduction uh, for hyper-realistic textures and environments and basically blobs. Um, something similar to meta blobs, but uh, used in a different way. And what it's called is uh, hyperblobs. And you, you basically use it the same way you would use meta blobs. Uh, you would add a couple primitives together and then um, apply a hyper texture to it and get something completely outrageous and something realistic and something very surreal and high quality, high resolution, or whatever you want to call it. Um, one of the things that you would use it for is basically as set pieces, this is the way I see it as. You can use them in terrains, but I see them as set pieces. You can create your own hyper blob and use it as like maybe a cliff face or as a very obscure looking rock. Uh, and the way you would go about doing that is in view 9, you'd go ahead and create a couple primitives. And I'll, sh I'll do that now. And uh, we'll put them here in front of the camera. And let's drop the camera down so we can actually see those rocks here. Or primitives or whatever you want to call them. The sphere. And um, get close to it. There we go. And we'll add oh, maybe one or two more here. I'll get them closer later. Okay. We'll move it over here. And these are very, very small, so bear with me while I set it up. And we have about three here. And that's all good and good and dandy. Uh, let's go ahead and actually flatten all of them like this. And let's go ahead and make one a little bit thinner than the other twist it around and make this one right here a little bit thinner than the other first one and we'll flip this up like that just so we get something different looking and move it more towards the middle here and this third one let's just squish it a little bit more and then rotate it that way all right and then just for fun let's go ahead and add a, a cone I'll flip that around like this and make like one of those really old time stereo sets. That's what this is looking like. Something kind of like that. Alright. Very outrageous looking, I know, but um, you'll see what we're getting at. If you use meta blobs, it's basically the same idea. So, what you want to do is grab all those. Instead of left clicking on the meta blob, uh, uh, button right here, you want to right click on it. And when you right click on it, well, let me show you this first. When you right click on it, it'll turn into this weird looking meta blob symbol, um, and that's what you want. And then after that, you want to replace all the materials with a default hyper texture. Go ahead and do that, and now you have something completely different. Uh, so, our little old time stero stereo phone or stero stereo player whatever is now some odd looking rock piece so it's kind of cool looking um, let's see what it looks like in a render really close up see what kind of detail you get on it Ooh, I forget how small these are and we'll just zoom in on it right here we'll bring them okay and actually in the hyper blobs um, they have a few things set by default if you double click on it it brings up this option right here and it'll give you maximum resolution which is basically quality um, the quality setting and smoothing and 100 degrees is you know it's kind of a lot to smooth it you can get some really nice smoothing on and make some really cool looking rocks but I tend to like mine a little bit more sharp than smooth so I'm going to drop it to about 60 and just because we're close up I'm going to raise the resolution uh, beware though when you raise the maximum resolution of the hyper blob uh, it does take a lot longer to first process the information. After that, Vue is pretty pretty easy going on it. Uh, but the first time you render it, it will take about maybe uh, one or two, maybe three minutes to render it out at first. And after that, it's pretty simple. So go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and render a preview quality. And let's go ahead and do it. Uh, just a quick tip. I actually switched it from uh, preview to final on the render. Um, I let it do go ahead and do the original render just so it can get all the information from the hyper blob into it. 
and that way the final render starts up a little bit faster as well so um, that might be a little quick tip on rendering hyperblobs I'm not sure if it really is that big of a deal or not but um, that's what I did it did bring up the renderer a lot faster I just wanted to use the final render to show you uh, how much detail is inside a hyperblob and the standard quality or the preview quality just didn't uh, do it justice so um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the final render and it does take a quite a long time to render out a hyperblob uh, especially with a high resolution so that's why you gotta keep a really close eye on it okay so it finally finished rendering as you can see here about 15 minutes and 55 seconds it took to render this um, but I also realized that I had my atmosphere quality boosts up all the way and as well as um, some other things that got in the way of the rendering so I remember doing a hyper blob like this and it only took about two minutes to render out like this on final quality so you don't have to worry too much about it. just make sure that you have your other settings checked correctly to where you want them but do expect that hyper blobs are going to take a while to render it is volumetric material that they're using and there's a lot of detail that goes into them and as you can see here lots of fine little details that go into making these and the default um, <clears throat> the default um, fractal that they use for this isn't really the best fractal I'd say it does give good results um, but it's not really the best and I think the best way to use hyper blobs is by using your own custom made fractals uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, ahead and show you how to do this and I'm afraid this tutorial might take a little bit longer than anticipated so it'll probably be multiple tutorials um, in view everything should be explained with great detail and not just half-assed uh, unfortunately YouTube isn't uh, too considerate uh, to others people's times so let's go ahead and do this I'm gonna keep this the way it is but I'm just gonna go ahead and um, edit the material and like as you can see here we have the default hyper blob and then the dark gray or the material that they're using um, for the for the uh, material slapped on it so in here all the all you really do in hyper blobs is add multiple uh, primitives together and then meld them together using the hyper blob technique well in older versions of view uh, what you would do is you would add your primitive come into the uh, texture or the uh, uh, the editor and you know what it'll just be easier to show you this okay so let's go ahead and add a circle it seems like sp or sphere sorry it seems like spheres are the easiest thing to use um, in terms of uh, showing something so let's go ahead and uh, just hide that from the render for now and I'm going to move this out of the way so I can see my sphere okay what you would do originally is you know go into the uh, material editor change it to a volumetric material and you have all these other lighting models you just go from uniform to volume shaded or not volume shaded my bad hypertexture and in hypertexture you would uh, go to color and density and you would load up a fractal and we're just going to use one of these um, one of these default ones one that looks pretty hectic and chaotic uh, let's go with s shit let's go with complex sedimentary rocks alright and that's what you would get is that and a lot of people go well what's the difference well let's see here you have all the same functions you would have if you use the hyper blob uh, you have the overall density the quality boost and you have the distance field which we'll get into later well let's go ahead and uh, let's raise the density here so we fill that in a little bit more maybe less than that and then let's go ahead and turn on distance field and what distance field is is uh, basically it creates a core and it'll expand um, the the lower it gets the more expansion from the middle it gets and it connects other pieces and I know that's a pretty simple way of saying it it'll connect other pieces that, fl that float off um, and you'll see that when we bring this up like this if you look very closely right here that'll be a little bit easier you can see these other pieces that kind of float off from the fractal uh, it's basically hitting a limit where it can't expand any further 
and it actually dislodges itself from um, from the material so what you want to do is expand it outwards to connect the pieces and that's what the distance field does and I guess the best way to explain it is uh, filling an empty space with a really thick material would be the best way to, s to explain it so and then you get something like this and we can change the overall density so it's less dense um, and you can see how when it gets less dense th the features actually um, aren't as pronounced and you get something completely different so when we do a, f a lot of density like full density um, they get really 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 noisy so you want to find a good uh, a good medium between the two and that is basically um, that is basically just using a volumetric material using a hypertexture and there are some benefits to using a hypertexture over a hyperblob um, but one of the major differences and one of the major major components of a hyperblob is that you can actually take these small little pieces that did dislodge themselves off of um, off of the material is it'll actually take these little pieces and just get away with them um, and I'll show you that right here um, when you go in here it says keep only the largest single chunk with that checked it actually will just keep the largest single chunk and then all these other small chunks that are coming off of the material um, you can just do away with those they won't be in the render and that's pretty nice considering that um, in view 8 um, when you would do it you would have to play with it until you found a whole chunk with no floating pieces and even then you might have little small pieces floating around you have to go in Photoshop and Photoshop them out and everything so um, that's basically the differences so it's really nice using uh, both of them uh, I really like using Hyperblob more so how would we use this and um, and how would we go about doing it well let me go ahead and delete just the regular hyper texture material thing right there and zoom in to the rock again and let's go ahead and go into the function editor don't be too scared about the function editor it's really simple to use it especially with the hyper blob so uh, when you first get into it if you're using the default hyper blob when you get into it you're seeing all this chaotic mess and you're probably like holy shisa what should I do about it well I just uh, I just simply delete them like this very simply and then I can reconnect that that's all I really do and then um, after that I uh, change it to I use it I usually use variable fractal uh, or variable variable roughness fractal that's what I would usually use and then I would just come down here and then be like oh do I want something that's ridiculous or do I want something that's kinda natural well, I'm gonna go ahead and use crystals um, and I use crystals a lot for a lot of my uh, my hyper blobs and that's because the crystal fractal or pattern gives some really nice pronounced effects here and we'll be able to see that here um, you can see that it's probably almost the same or typical from the default one we had let's go ahead and change this lar uh, largest feature to go down a little bit a little bit more maybe not that much and it's just like a hit or miss here maybe right there and then we can bring up the roughness a little bit get something completely different and here's a good example of those little pieces that come off the uh, material like right here and right here and right here um, those would come off and they'd be in the render and it just wouldn't look natural and that's what hyperblobs fix let's go ahead and lower the largest feature and see if we can get something else here I don't want it too small you still want a natural looking rock and even sometimes with hyperblobs you still get those little uh, little pieces from the material on there as well um, and you just gotta work around that as well but it's not as often that you would get them so I'm gonna go ahead and lower the roughness and let's go ahead and keep that for now and we'll click OK and let's go ahead and see what we have here go ahead and render a preview this time since I already showed you the quality of hyperblobs <laughs> Uh, won't take nearly as long to render out the preview. Alright, that's what we have.